Alright, so now I'm going to do the 2001 AP Calc AB for your response question 4. So I've zoomed in. You can pause the video and work out the problem. And then I shall show you how to solve it. So, we've got this graph, right? And we're told that this function g of x equals 2x plus the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt, right? And our first problem asks us to find g of negative 3. So what that's really asking, if g of x is 2x plus 0 to x f of x, g of negative 3 is the same thing as 2 times negative 3 and then the integral from 0 to negative 3 of f of t dt, right? So, um, we know that the integral of a derivative is just the area underneath the curve of that function, right? So here we've got this graph. So what we have to do is we have to flip this, right, using that idea that if this number is smaller than that number, we just flip them and then it's just the negative of whatever this would have been. So simplify that to negative 6 minus 0, or negative 3 to 0 f of t dt. So then we just go to the graph of f and we find the area from negative 3 to 0 and it looks like it's a quarter circle so its radius is 1, 2, 3 and we know that the area of a circle is the same thing as pi r squared and since this is a fourth of the area it's going to be uh, pi r squared divided by 4 so um, 9 pi over 4 and then since we have our negative 6, it's going to be negative 6 minus 9 pi over 4. And that is g of negative 3. Or there are two more parts to this question. It also asks for um, g prime of x and g prime of negative 3. So if we know that g of x equals 2x plus 0 to x f of t dt. To find the derivative of this, this is just simple uh, uh, deriving, and then we use um, the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, so this is just going to be f of x, right? So then we can plug in negative 3, 2 plus f of negative 3, you see? And then we just go back to our graph and we see what the y value, the corresponding y value to f of negative 3 is. So negative 3 is this here, so it is 0. So 2 plus 0 equals 2. And that is g prime of negative 3. So this problem just depends on if you know what the fundamental theorem of calculus is and if you can um, go from a derivative to the um, go from the derivative or use the derivative to find the area underneath the curve just sort of that kind of stuff right and then the next part of this problem asks to find the x-coordinate of the point where g has an absolute maximum. So um, when we're talking about maximums, you want to find g prime of x, which we already found, and then you want to find that equals zero or it does not exist. So like we said before, g prime of x equals 2 plus f of x, right? And then we want to find where this is equal to zero. So we set g prime of x equal to 0, so equal equals 0 equals 2 plus f of x. And then if we, um, we can simplify this further by subtracting 2 from both sides, and your 2 equals f of x. So the places where g prime, or g has a, um, where g has a, um, So that means that the points where 
G has a critical point where the maxes and mins occur is when uh, f of x equals negative 2. So we see where negative 2 is uh, the line y equals 2 where it intersects with the graph and it intersects right in between 1 or 2 and 3. So I would say that this is 2.5. x equals 2.5. If you're not certain about this, you can always find this slope right, and then uh, plug into point slope form, but um, this is two and a half. So, set up our little number line. So g prime of x, it equals zero at two and a half. And then we test what the points are from, um, what we, we test whether g prime of x or yeah g prime of x is positive or negative in these intervals to figure out if it is actually a maximum or not. So we could plug in any number um, between negative four and two point five. So g prime of let's say zero. Yeah, zero sounds like a good number. Two plus f of zero, which would be three. So this is 5, so that means this is positive, right? And then we plug in any number between 2.5 and, and 3. So let's say um, g prime of... Mm, I mean, I guess we could... 2.75. Because, um, actually, you know what? We could just do 3. We we'll just do 3. Equals 2... Um, plus f of 3, and this equals, f of 3 is negative 3, so this is going to be a negative number, it's going to be negative 1. So, you can say that this is an absolute maximum, because first of all, it's a critical point. We've determined that using this. And then we can say that g prime of x changes signs from positive to negative at x equals 2.5, right? So, we've determined that x equals 2.5 is the place where g has an absolute maximum, right? And this will be your justification. Um, sometimes these number lines aren't enough, so you have to write what you're explaining through this number line, right? And always label your number line, because if there's just some random number line, uh, the AP reader will be like, well, well, I don't know. I don't know what this number line is supposed to mean, so label your number lines. Alright, and then part C asks us to find all the values where G has a point of inflection. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take the derivative of the um, of G, 2 plus F of X, and then we're going to take that the derivative of that to get the second derivative which is what you use to find points of inflection. So anytime you see the word point of inflection, you're going to want to use the second derivative. Anytime you see max or min, that's first derivative, right? Okay. Then we're going to set this equal to zero. Or actually, in this situation where this does not exist, or when it equals zero, right? And the reason I say it does not exist is because, um, first of all, you should always test the points that do not exist because a critical point is not just where it equals zero, it's also where it does not exist, right? So the, the reason I would say it does not exist here is because we've got these, um, these, this cusp here, right? So this would be one of the places where f prime of x would not exist, okay? And another place would be here, where there's a vertical... Um, tangent. So, we, like I said before, we're going to determine where the tangent line is horizontal or where it does not exist. So, just from this, from this, and the reason we're finding, um, we're finding the tangent line of f, right? Because we've translated it over in terms of f because that's the graph that was provided to us. So, the places where the tangent line does not exist include uh, 0 and negative 3. So we make our number line again. This is f prime of x. 
we've got, we set up our endpoints, negative 4, and then we have, um, we've got negative 3, 0, and 3. And then we test points in those intervals, right? So, we're just looking at the slope of this. So, I see that this slope is positive. So, this is positive, right? And then from negative 3 to 0, it's still positive, right? It's still increasing. So, this is also positive. Then, from 0 to 3, I see that the slope changes to negative, right? Negative. So, that means that 0 is the only point of inflection, right? Negative 3 would be a point of inflection if the, um, if the slope of f, the tangent line of f, had changed signs. But it didn't, so this is not a point of inflection. So, at x equals 0, there is a point of inflection because f prime of x changes from positive to negative, right? That would be our answer. Alright, and then the final problem says to find the average rate of change of f on the interval negative 4 to 3, but there is no point C for which f prime of C is equal to the average rate of change. Explain why this does not contradict the mean value theorem. So, to find the average rate of change, what we do is it's basically kind of like rise over a run, where you just take your, um, this pen is dying, why did I choose this one? Where you basically find f prime of 3, subtract that from f prime of negative 4, and then you, um, subtract the two x values, right? So f prime of 3, we said was negative 3. And then f prime of 4 is uh, negative 1. And then we have 3 plus 4. So the average rate of change is equal to negative 2 over 7, right? So that's the first part of the question. But then it goes on to say that mean value theorem does not apply in this situation. So let's first explore what the mean value theorem is. The mean value theorem um, necessitates that our graph is continuous on the entire interval, right? And I mean, it is continuous, right? But the second um, necessitation, is that a word? The second um, thing that it requires is that f is differentiable at all points between negative 4 and 3, right? Not including the endpoints. But, we, like we said before, it's not differentiable at negative 3, where there's a vertical tangent line, or at 0, where there's like a cusp, right? So, you can simply say that because f of x is not diff differentiable at x equals negative 3 and x equals 0. This statement does not contradict mean value theorem. Right. If you want, you could write out what mean value theorem is but I think that might be overkill. Like, um, as long as the AP reader knows that you have the basic idea of mean value theorem, this explanation should be sufficient. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe.